Andy Brooks, COO and Director of Technology Development at RUCDR Infinite Biologics. It's a unit of Rutgers Human Genetics Institute joins us now. That lab has received FDA approval for its COVID-19 saliva test. And Andrew, that's where I'd like to start, just on the use of these tests, specifically to the White House, where it seemed to be almost being used as a kind of a metal detector. You know, you take the test and then you get entrance if, you, if you're negative. Is that the way it should be used? Yeah, um, uh, for all testing, obviously, um, the testing regimen and the timing is critical. Um, so having that defined and using it as a, as, as a point of entry, if you will, uh, to limit exposure, but also um, to make the right decisions um, and be able to then identify if you're exposed is, is critical and, and will remain to be so for, for some time. Um, so they were using it properly, but it didn't work properly? I'm not, I'm not following. So it's, um, and, and I'm not 100% uh, sure of the testing regimen of, of the president or in the White House, but there's a, a window from the time of exposure to when you shed virus. Um, if you're looking at molecular testing, uh, looking for viral transcripts, which is still the most sensitive and reproducible of, of all testing mechanisms, you can detect it the moment you start shedding virus. Antigens then, um, you know, can be detected as proteins as a function of the virus, and they're on a bit of a, of a different schedule. So if there are multiple testing modalities used, uh, one will detect the, the, the moment that you're shedding virus, um, whether you are symptomatic or asymptomatic. And I think in this instance, it was a matter of timing. People, when they're exposed, um, their bodies respond differently. Some people will contract the virus. Some people will contract and become asymptomatic. Uh, so it's unknown. And those that are symptomatic immediately become um, candidates for, for uh, testing because the fact they're symptomatic. Andy, we heard from a former top White House official earlier this hour who suggested the White House needed to layer its technologies uh, to be uh, to provide a, a more foolproof uh, barrier against this virus spreading there. But what we know about how they operated before some of these larger events, including the nominating ceremony for Judge Amy Coney Barrett last Saturday, was that they tested everyone who was attending. And then once they received their negative test, they were allowed to sit down and remove their masks. In, in that scenario, what sort of layering of technology would make you more confident that that would not be a spreading type event and that, uh, that everyone sitting down in the Rose Garden was in fact negative? I, I'm not sure there would be a testing regimen that would make me completely comfortable with that um, altogether. Again, given, given the timing and everyone's response in being different. When you're exposed, again, um, within two to seven days, you can shed virus. If anybody missed that window, um, it, it can be a problem. And there needs to be a layering of technology. Uh, I imagine a molecular test prior to attendance uh, and then a, a rapid test immediately prior to sitting down would give you the best level of, of um, protection, but it's not foolproof, as we, found, as we found. The ability to get a rapid response, saliva, obviously, as well. Uh, you know, you're, they're being used more and more often, aren't they? I mean, I've got a kid in college. They seem to be testing them twice a week up there using a saliva test. Uh, is it an effective way to get a good sense as to how much is in the population of the, in terms of the virus? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot, we've come a long way with testing approaches, with looking at surveillance versus diagnostic testing and screening. Uh, some schools are using a pool testing, although, again, that's just surveillance and not diagnostic. You need them to break down um, any positives to look at um, students or, or people individually. But because it's non-invasive, because it's easy to do and it's very robust, um, it is, a, it is a, a great tool and a testing measure. Um, and again, looking at molecular tests, looking at, at you know, for virus or viral RNA um, is, um, is, is really critically important. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.